Uh, hi, my name is Devna Casey and I'm from NUI Galway. And um, this is a list here of all the participants that are actually on the team. Um, in terms of our project, really, it was inter focusing on interprofessional education. And this is defined as occurring when students from two or more professions learn with, from and about each other to improve collaboration and quality of care. And the fundamental premise is, is that actually if we educate our healthcare professionals together, we actually, hopefully, will, that they will work typically in the workforce in a much better uh, collaborative uh, fashion. However, we don't have a lot of evidence yet to support whether this is true or not, so that is some of the work that's been done at the moment elsewhere. Our overall aim was to implement and evaluate the impact of an online IPE program designed to promote collaborative practice within undergraduate healthcare disciplines. Um, it was a six weeks program based on value um, based decision making, which focused on decision making in ethically problematic healthcare situations. And basically, it was revolved around different scenarios. So, students, for example, on the online program were given a scenario whereby they had to deal with a situation that you were working on the floor, you discovered actually that your healthcare provider that you were working for was actually overcharging your patients. And to make matters worse, you discovered actually that some of your colleagues were also in on it. So it was to do with whistleblowing, one of the examples. Another example was to do with anorexia. Somebody comes in, a child comes in with anorexia. You get only a small snippet initially in the first week the students got in the scenario, and they're asked their viewpoints. And then it transpired that we drip fed them more information in week two, and suddenly they discovered that actually the, the family context of this person um, may be predisposing them to the anorexia. And then values and looking at people's values changing as the information was disclosed. Um, and you can't really see that much, but that's really the, the six weeks program, and they were the various um, topics that were actually covered. Um, in terms of the actual um, outcomes and projects are, that were projected and achieved, as we were asked to outline, these really were the elements that we produced um, in our proposal to begin with. And so far, we have met most of these, promote student understanding of the perspectives and values and roles of other healthcare disciplines, evaluated the impact on students' ability to collaborate, capture students' and staff's experiences, look at the factors that hindered and facilitated engagement, identified changes in students' perceptions and attitudes. The one we haven't yet done is compare outcomes across participating, institu participating institutions. The reason for that is that it was initially anticipated that UCD and ourselves would start at the same time, but due to local issues in UCD, particularly they start two weeks after we do in, in, in semester two, um, we were three weeks into the programme by the time they were due to start, and at that stage it was felt really that we should evaluate it first in NUIG before we actually implement it within UCD. So we don't have comparing across participating institutions. In terms of looking at costs, we're actually looking at that at, at the moment. Um, our methodology really was a sequential exploratory uh, mixed methods design. Two phases. We did focus group interviews with students and also with staff. Um, initially that was what we had planned in the initial proposal but we changed that to extend it to actually include a questionnaire which we developed from the focus group data from the students. The students were also asked us to complete the readiness for interprofessional learning scale and the interdisciplinary education perception scale and they were also asked some questions about describing uh, their decision making changes after the programme was finished. Unforeseen challenges, um, short time frame to develop the programme and undertake the training and that was actually quite challenging because ours is a one year programme um, the funding finishes in December, the, our delivery of the programme actually started in January, the funding came through at the end of November, December, so getting the programme in place and the training was, was quite challenging. Uh, awarding credits is in semester two, all the syllabus files had already been submitted, so we weren't starting, we were starting if you like halfway through the academic year, so trying to get credits input, inputted for this was quite challenging. Um, and, and not always uh, possible, therefore we had one group of students who actually got credits and another group who did not. Recruiting the students to participate voluntary, again, was quite a challenge. And of course, getting students to complete the evaluations at the end. Um, despite the fact that we actually did use incentives, we, used, we offered them, if they participated, they had an opportunity to be involved in a draw for two mini iPads. It still didn't seem to be uh, enough. Okay, in terms of our outcome data and the impact on students, the qualitative phase we had 47 students um, and really they came from, most came from nursing because this actually was built, inbuilt in the nursing program that they were actually getting credits for this. Um, all the other actual disciplines were not getting credits. 
as with medicine, occupational therapy, and speech and language. In terms of the findings, four main themes identified from the focus groups with the students. One of the things that came through was the meaning of interprofessional education. And they said things like, well, I suppose learning things from another profession's point of view, being able to inco incorporate that so that you are not just thinking of your own profession when making a decision and stuff. And it was very clear that for most students, really, this was their first read into professional um, uh, education experience, although some of them did think that actually working, just going on their placement in the ward was interprofessional, but when they began to think about it, it really wasn't interprofessional. Impact on learning, barriers to interprofessional learning and strategies were the other themes. In terms of the impact on learning, I suppose it really, f we found, focused on three areas. Preparation for clinical practice and understanding of others' roles. You're going to meet people out in the ward or whatever, and I think maybe in a strange way it kind of teaches you that you need to know be more open to other people's opinions. Respect their opinions. If they do disagree with you, well, then that's okay because that's their opinion as well. Reflection and critical thinking was a powerful um, impact as well. And the student said, I think it really made you reflect on your choices. There are things that you had to go back and think about why you picked that, and I think that was really good. It would make you more aware of your decision making and like make you consider more options before making that decision, I think. And then the role of values in decision making. It definitely made me think about my values a lot more. Like as in, I never really sat down and had to think, well, how do you actually feel about this? What will you do in that situation? And like the content of the program really made me think about like what I would like to do in that situation. So I feel like the content really made me think about my values like. The barriers really revolved around four categories as well. The online system, ECATS and workload, insufficient instruction and training, and unequal involvement of disciplines. Um, the online system, um, really, to some of the comments were, the interface was pretty difficult, but other than that, I think the content-wise, it was pretty stimulating. It's only in its infancy stage, so I mean these are teething problems. Once it is solved, I think it should be a really useful source of learning. ECATS and workload. This really, I suppose, in terms of, was an issue for the nursing students, because we, had to, we gave them credits, and by actually giving them credits, we overloaded them more than we should have and therefore they found it, it was kind of the last straw that broke the camel's back. Um, you know, so it's social science, we also have law and psychology, and then we have philosophy, and then we've got like the VX and an assignment in philosophy. So that's like four, four things for all at the end of the day, social science is worth only 10 credits. Um, insufficient training and instruction was an issue, and also unequal involvement of disciplines. Last week, that was very difficult, that dashboard challenge, we had to figure that out ourselves, trawl through these pages and pages of information. In terms of unequal involvement of disciplines, we had more nursing students than any, any others, so therefore sometimes the nursing students felt they were talking to each other. Like the first week, like literally no one was commenting. There was only two people who like responded in the group discussion, so it wasn't really helpful like. It's only like two professions that responded. But above all else and across all the actual, uh, the interviews and the questionnaires, IPE course has potential, came across. It is a fantastic concept. I do think that it is a brilliant idea, but it just wasn't gone about in the right way to start off with. If you were to fix those things, I think it would be brilliant. I think it's a really, really positive thing. Like, as I said, if it was me, I really enjoyed it in that sense, and I think it had so much potential for the future. This is the first step that's being done, really. <coughs> um, really, the strategies for facilitating IP were the reverse of all the things and the barriers. Simplify the system, review the workload, make compulsory for all students. The irony of it was the students who were assessed didn't want to be assessed. The students who had been assessed were crying out to get marks. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of difficult. Improve the instruction and training and have smaller groups. Initially, we had one large group and students actually found it very difficult trying to find the comments down through the, through the whole online system. So we divided them up into smaller groups. Going forward, that was, we would put them in the smaller groups um, from the beginning. We also did the evaluation questionnaire, which we developed from the focus groups. We sent this out. There was 166 students who participated, and 122 actually completed the, um, the survey. Um, I can't go through all the findings, so I've just picked out some of the, the highlights. Basically, in terms of, you see, the IP is relevant for my practice. You can see here that there was overall agreement. The online value-based program was useful, overall agreement. The online value-based program provided a new way of looking at issues. Um, it developed my critical thinking. Um, again, those two were, were balanced off each other, so they did find it useful. And the online value program had a lot of potential to contribute to IPE. Um, 
if we look at the questions in relation to the online system, um, really in terms of the instructions and guidance given to me on how to log on and, and navigate the online system prepared me well. You will see that there was overall disagreement with that statement. The interface of the online program was easy to navigate. Again, people weren't happy with it. Um, the interface of the online program was easy to log on to. We could actually getting onto it, they, they found that they could. They found it difficult to follow the online comments in the large group. Um, and the poll surveys and XP Pines contributed to my learning. And again, we can see here that there was disagreement. Not too much, but there was disagreement. Uh, technical support responded quickly to problems. We actually introduced additional technical support halfway through the, the, um, the program to provide better support to, to the students. The key question, I suppose, in terms of when we asked the, the students, one key question was, would you recommend the current online value-based program that you just completed with the exact same content and the same format to other students? And overwhelmingly, 82% said they would not. And when asked, some of the 95 students actually completed the open question associated with that question, and they said things like that most of them recognized the potential, but things that they said were, I would highly recommend the content of the online value-based IPE program, but I think the delivery format could be improved, as at times it was difficult to find each week's information. The layout of the website was quite difficult to use, though the content was quite good. I feel it would benefit from a review of some aspects of how it's run, taking into consideration that workload of other modules and the fact that we also have to submit a philosophy assignment as well as taking part in the programme. In terms of the national impact of outcomes, how the project will impact nationally, it evaluates the use of an online system as a medium to deliver IPE in the higher education sector. It provides a list of factors that hinder and facilitate. Future design of IPE digital technology programmes will be shaped by this project and it potentially to change the way we deliver and teach into professional education. It also builds the capacity, digital technology capacity of both the staff and the students, um, despite the difficulties of actually being involved. Um, these are a list of outputs so far to date. We've had a number of publications, and um, at the moment we're in the process of preparing um, a written paper submission to, the, to, to one of the journals. Three minutes, Okay. In terms of the benefits to the higher education sector of having completed the work, it introduces a new and innovative teaching and learning method at undergraduate level, and most of the uh, IPE programs actually, if you look at the literature, are, are at postgraduate level as opposed to undergraduate level, so it, it's, it's a distinct change. It provides insight into the effective use of digital technologies in teaching and learning, and provides a list of recommendations to improve the process, and allow other sectors to learn from, from, our, from our mistakes and, our, and what we did well. Uh, it provides program content and clinical case scenarios which can be made available to others for use. And I suppose above all, the project reveals that an IPE program is acceptable to the students, they value the concept, they appreciate its potential to enhance learning and collaborative practice, and the quality of patient care. And that was a written out, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer.